Hey guys, I'm Cameron and welcome back to the Anubba Resources YouTube channel. Event planning can be hectic, anything can go wrong and there is just so much to remember and keep track of all the time. This calls for a framework to help keep the workflow smooth and focused. And today's video is on just that. Each event is different. Hence, there is no one size fits all event planning checklist. But there are a small number of fundamental items that uphold every single event. So let's go through three of the main ones today in what is the beginner's guide to event planning. The first fundamental thing every event planner needs to do is to set goals and objectives. So why are you doing this event? What do you hope to gain from it? Does it, uh, does it line up with the goals of your organization? These are just some of the questions you'll need to be asking yourself first. And if the answers to these are yes, then proceed. If no, then you might want to restructure the event or even put it on hold just for the time being until it's completely right to go ahead. So keep the big picture in mind. Your event has to serve a purpose, remember? Ideally, that is your brand's overall marketing strategy and aligning with your company's mission statement. Not only that, you would want to improve your event planning skills as time progresses. Hence the need, and this is important, to quantify your goals. So quantify your goals. When working with performance goals, focus on what you can control. To elaborate, um, a common mistake made by inexperienced event planners is focusing on things that they cannot control. For example, you can't really control how many of your previous attendees choose to return for next year's event. Whilst, on the other hand, something that you can control is the ability to assess the change in consumer behavior through the number of sales after the event. Your objectives should act as a manner to achieve your goals. I'll say that again, your objectives should act as a manner to achieve your goals. They should be written in detail to define narrow, measurable and tangible results. That's important. If your goal, for instance, is to reach potential investors, your objective can be to distribute the information that might entice new investors, including all relevant information in emails so that all the information is readily available. The more specific it is, the easier it will be for you later on to take note and determine the metrics that are of the utmost importance in your event. So you can actually determine what goals you're hitting. All right, so the second thing that we need to discuss is possibly the most poorly executed step of every amateur event planner, and that is estimating a budget. There are so many moving parts and pieces of an event that need to be obtained prior to the event. And these items cost, of course, money. Your event can literally fall apart if your team that came up with an idea forgot to take into consideration the budget for the entire event itself. You can end up paying much more than you expected or even not being able to acquire the equipment and tools needed because you don't have access to the funds. Let's quickly touch on things which require the majority of your budget. Now the first one would be the venue. So for instance, the cost of rental, insurance, accommodation, or even transport for your team both to and from the venue. It's important to bear in mind as well that you need to have a good estimation of the number of attendees you're going to have as this will affect the overall expense. So do you need to lay out a deposit early? Can the venue be paid in installments? What packages or discounts can the venue owner offer? All of these questions are things you should be asking yourself and asking the owner prior in order to prepare the most accurate budget for the event possible. Now, the second thing similar to a event is also quite expensive, is food and beverage, or F&B for short. It's quite self-explanatory to be honest, but let's go into it. So you base this number on the number of attendees you are expecting. So you should always take note that some attendees might have different dietary requirements and wants and needs, which will affect the budget. Things such as whether people are vegetarian, lactose intolerant, have nut allergies, will affect pricings and things like that also. And something like combining your venue and catering service can actually cost sometimes more or sometimes less. So you actually need to really, really look into that. So make sure you look around, check caterers as well as a venue as they often do charge per head. In just about every single event, there will be some additional costs that come up along the way. So here at Another Resources, we like to put these down as miscellaneous expenses. 
You should always account some of the budget for this. It's very, very important. This can be costs that are unexpected or some damage, for instance, that needs to be fixed quickly. You can allocate a certain amount for this and you won't be scrounging for cash at the last minute. Trust me, it's not a good feeling and you do not want to be in an event having to call up trying to get a budget just to fix some things. Your event budget is a living, breathing item that has a life of its own. At least that's kind of what it feels like sometimes. It's not an item that can simply just be crossed off and you're done with it. In fact, it's quite the opposite where you actually need to revisit it over and over and over again to keep yourself updated and as transparent and cost effective as possible. It's very important. Now the third and final component I'll touch on in today's beginner's guide to event planning is announcing and advertising your event. Now, once your plan is drafted out, you should start promoting it. Having give or take 70% of your final plan set in stone is good enough to start this process. That's because promoting and advertising can take a significant amount of time and resources to gain traction, especially if it's for say a public event. So please do not skip, skip this step at any cost. Imagine having, for instance, the biggest speakers in the world or even world-renowned celebrities, but no one knows anything about your event. You won't have people show up because you're not promoting it. So most commonly, event promotion starts with something like an initial teaser, such as those you might see on your social media accounts or YouTube ad or even at the cinema, for instance. Maybe even hype it up by asking your target audience to empty their schedules on a particular day. You know, you could follow it with an announcement of the event. You know, sometimes people use a little touch of mystery, which never hurts, as you want to get people psyched that's the main goal. So here's a quick short list of things that you might want to have in your advertisement plan. Things like web page announcements, social media hype on multiple platforms, email blasts if you have a newsletter, press and media connections if you have them, and printed materials. So depending on your event, you can choose to only release specific details about the event at a very close date or even not at all to keep your audience wondering what's going to happen. If you're working in collaboration or you do have sponsors, it's also important you should probably give them a shout out as cross-platform promotion never hurt anybody and it will benefit both you and your sponsor or collaboration partners. Okay, so congratulations, your event was successful. But wait, it is not quite over yet. There's more to it. It's incredibly important to assess your event to see what went well and what didn't go well. So you need to go back to your event's goals and objectives and ask yourself some key questions. For example, how did we perform uh, compared to our expectations, the number of attendees, forecast, budget, or just about any target you set out to hit. If you did hit it, great. If not, you should be going back to the drawing board and assessing what needs to be fixed. Uh, another important thing is if you're working in collaboration with a group, you should be asking how did your team perform? Use your event as a feedback generator for anyone who helped you throughout. So at another, we like to do a questionnaire post-event post and get anonymous feedback. Ask them what's wrong, what went right. Another one is the marketing strategy. Which strategy was the most effective? And whether it was creating a social media hype or writing a blog on your web page, it's important to determine which route you should be taking for your next event, because whatever is successful, hopefully you can replicate in your next event. All right, so yes, this list is long, overwhelming, and even a little bit annoying at times, but in reality, guys, these lists and checkpoints will give you peace of mind during the event and leave no stones unturned. So as always, I want to say thank you for sticking with me throughout this long video to the end. So we at Another Resources really hope you found this slight bit of in, uh, industry insight helpful. And if you are interested in more, you can find content just like this across our YouTube channel below or even on our website, which is actually linked below also. Uh, if you did enjoy today's video, please, it means a lot if you give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with hopefully more ongoing and insightful content. Uh, let us know below uh, what you thought, any feedback you have or want to give is fantastic. Or if you're an industry insider, what type of informative content you would like to see next. So let us know in the comments below. Once again, see you next time and thank you very much.